This company makes yacht wheels as large as a meter and a half in diameter. It uses two traditional shipbuilding woods, American holly and Burmese teak, species that are as beautiful as they are durable. Workers use a table saw to cut both types of wood into long, thin strips that'll become the wheel's rim. They measure the strips with digital calipers, then sand them down to a thickness of just 3.1 millimeters. Using a disc sander now, a worker angles the ends into what are called scarf joints. He'll join the strips by fitting these angles together. After coating each strip with epoxy, he attaches it with clamps to a round jig, waxed beforehand to prevent sticking. The glue is waterproof because the wheels are often exposed to rough weather up on deck. The worker gradually bends each two meter long strip all the way around the jig. And a spring-loaded clamp temporarily holds the end of each strip in place until he aligns the scarf joint with that of the next strip. It takes up to eight hours of non-stop work to lay all the strips. He alternates between the blonde holly and the darker teak for a total of seven layers. Then he leaves the rim to set overnight. To make each spoke, the wheel has five of them, a worker temporarily joins strips of holly and teak with double-sided tape. A computer-guided cutting machine then carves an opening through the middle and shapes the outer edge into a triangular shape. This reduces the spoke's weight and helps it fit to the rim later on. Next, he removes the tape and glues the wood strips together, along with others made of carbon fiber. They strengthen the spoke while keeping it lightweight. He places a wax jig in the center and clamps it in place. He leaves the spoke to set overnight. The next, he, he sands away the dried glue, then uses a router to round the edges. Together, the four wood and three carbon fiber layers are just two and a half centimeters thick. He traces a template on a stack of 14 pre-glued curved strips of holly and teak. He follows his trace lines with a bandsaw, cutting out what's called a fairing. This component will join each spoke to the rim. Now he drills a hole in each fairing. and inserts a temporary dowel to position a reinforcing strip of carbon fiber at the top. It's time to join the spokes to the rim. Earlier, he glued strong fiberglass dowels to the rim. Now he inserts them into the fairings and into holes in the spokes, also glued beforehand. Through the openings, he clamps the spokes to the rim. Then he positions an aluminum hub in the center tapping it into place with a mallet. Now with a jigsaw, he cuts a sliver off the ends of the fairings so they'll curve into the rim. He uses a router to round off the vertical edges of the wheel. He files the fairings by hand to complete the smooth transition to the rim. Just these finishing touches alone can take up to five hours to complete. Using a router, it takes him another five hours to gradually round off the horizontal edge. Now to protect the wheel from the elements, particularly sun damage. First, a polyester primer. Then they sand it and apply two coats of waterproof varnish. On the yacht, five stainless steel bolts attach the wheel to a pedestal that connects to the rest of the steering mechanism. To change how fast the rudder moves, you simply turn a knob at the center of the wheel. How's that for power steering? To get you where you're going, come hell or high water.